Alrighty, well, morning everybody. Uh, well, time, uh, time for my uh, pseudo cast, and um, and for today's selection, um, I'll 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 explain more here, but but uh, due to recent due to uh, due to recent events, I am definitely going with this video here, and um, it's only gonna be a it's only gonna be an 11 minute video. So what I what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and start it all over again. So. Okay. Um. Yeah. And I'm. This kind of went off went off to a bad start. Let me let me fix something here. I already screwed up. Okay. There we go. Um, but yeah, but yeah, let me, uh, go ahead and get this started, and, uh, because this is, um, this is a Pinball Hall of Fame inside tour, um, this might go a little over long, because, um, I'm probably gonna get distracted, I'm probably gonna feel a need to explain some of these tables, too, so, so. And now let me uh, sound check this real quick. Okay, so it's not that loud. All right, but anyway, um, to start with, um, I had a call in last night. And, um, I I'm on um, I was on zero sleep, just trying to. One, it was um, it was hot as hell in my apartment, or hot as hell in my bedroom. I have no AC, AC in there, and it was uh, anywhere between um, uh, 85 to 90 degrees last night. So I bas it basically like trying to sleep in a sauna wasn't really working. So, but uh, during that time, uh, I'm sitting here just tossing and turning, tossing and turning, and uh, I ended up feeling my lower back just, just this big cracking noise on my lower back. I've had it happen before, and also like before, I ended up having a call in sick because of it, because there ain't no way in hell I'm gonna go on to work with the, in the condition I'm in. I mean, especially, I mean, especially when there's a big ol' uh, we have a huge freight load last night, so there's probably gonna be some uh, backlash, Pro probably gonna be some people complaining when I go back into work on Wednesday, but I mean, look man, I mean, you know, kind of an old man here, the joints don't work like they used to. So, I mean, I get hurt. I can't just go straight into work and just somehow shrug it off. I mean, so. But, yeah. You know, but, um, all, but, um, one of the biggest reasons why, oh, whoa, 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 let me back that up. Let me back that up. Event. Okay, not the one I was thinking of. Guardians of the Galaxy. Is that the same? Is that the same table that's um? Ew, yeah. And I am, I am no, not I'm no hip. Or excuse me. I'm not a super hyper hipster or anything like that. But uh, these kind of tables I am no fan of. The ones with like the TV screens, because then that means that forces me to put it to be in two places at once. I mean, well, for one, I'm there to play pinball, not watch TV. So I mean, so, you know, sometimes the latest technology isn't always good. I think the best heyday in pinball was uh, probably around the '90s or whenever he had uh, these kind of screens. I believe they're called called DMX screens, where it's black and orange. I mean, cause you know, more informative than like the old school score reels that they had, and then it was like just basic digital. Basic a, di a basic digital score. Then they had a, they had like a plain, they had the old uh, digital messages, like a, like on a speaking spell, you know that kind of thing. And then I had a, they had the DMXs, black and orange. They're actually to me the the apex, the apex of technology or pinball technology right there. But uh, with these TV screens, I don't care for them at all. Because like like I said, and secondly. This is an awful lot of information I have to process here. 
you know, I'm, you know, I'm, you know, a lot of pixels, a lot of images, a lot of detail, a lot of detail that I have to filter through, and at the same time, I'd have to play, I'm down here having to actually play pinball as well, so, and I saw, um, I saw a little sample of this, of uh, these kind of tables, I think it was, um, Black Knight, something of death or something like that it was like the very very latest black knight table and there was also uh i don't it wasn't wizard of oz i think it was um it was elvira's very latest table that also had a tv screen but it was giving me the same problems as these probably would i the the tv's the tv screen is too distracting i mean like i said i would much rather have an old 90s dmx you know, it was just two colors, black and orange. You know, very easy to decipher. You know, there's a good amount of detail, but without going overboard with it. So, but anyway, let me continue on. Oh, uh, but yeah, but anyway, um... I watched this a really awesome documentary last night called uh, "Special When Lit." Definitely one of my all-time favorite uh, pinball documentaries. Cause um, unlike all the other documentaries, ooh, 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 Super Mario Brothers, I've only seen this table one single time in my entire life, and um, in I, Pinball Arcade will probably never have this table in their in their collection, so. I guess it would fall to Pinball FX3 to have this table in theirs. But yeah, I would love to see this in in virtual. But yeah, moving right along. But, but yeah, because this time, unlike other pinball documentaries, they actually captured the people. The actual pinball players themselves and not just the manufacturers. One of my regulars loves that table, Black Hole. Played that before. To me, it's an overrated table. It goes over my head. No idea what that one is. Eight Ball Deluxe grew up on that table. Black Knight 2000 got that on a pinball arcade. Fishtails, uh, FX3 and Arcade. The arcade version is way superior. Um, but yeah, because again, unlike other pinball documentaries, this time they actually got the players involved, the pinball players. And I find these guys to be far more intimidating than, say, Mongol bikers or, you know, people of that ilk, um, gangbangers. I find the pinball players to be more intimidating. See, especially after watching, I probably watched about, about half of this documentary. But yeah, like I said, I... These guys, I find to be more creep, to be more scary than the damn, than say, Crips and Bloods. For, for some, for some reason, they only scare me a little bit. That's a fight game machine, I believe. Six games of one. That's old school. There we go. I remember that. I remember that one. Good old Tetris too. I sucked at that one. But yeah, you know, one of the one of the older pinball one of the older pinball collectors, he's he said and he freaking nailed it. These days, the only pe the only people you really see see checking out pinball now are old people. You know, the people that actually grew up with physical pinball tables. The kids these days, not really so much. Oh, oh let me back that up. kind of going the wrong direction here. Okay. But yeah, it's like... Oh, damn, that's... um. Elvira and the Party Monsters. Okay. So, choosing this video was a good... was uh, both good and bad. I mean, it's freaking great seeing these old pinball machines, but on the other hand, I, I kind of want to do a pseudo cast as well. 
So. But yeah, like but like he was saying, I mean, most of the people for the rare time that I actually go out and check out the pinball, it's mostly like the older people that I see playing them. I hardly, I don't, I can't really recall seeing any uh, teenagers playing pinball. Firepower, that's an old one. Guess. Cyclone, played that one when I was a teenager. So yeah, that. So yeah, I'm gonna probably gonna have to stop it here. But yeah, it's like um, all the physical um, all the physical tables that you see nowadays are mostly played by uh, by like the older people, like probably thirty and up. You're not gonna see a whole lot of uh, teenagers playing pinball these days. I mean, for them, it's like whatever is on Steam or whatever is on computer. But yeah, that was something else too. Some of these pinball collectors that I was looking at, they got more pinballs in their house than I do on Pinball Arcade. It's like virtual pinball for those that don't know. But yeah, I, I got about, I got somewhere over 100 tables on Pinball Arcade. Some of these pinball collectors that I'm seeing, they got more than that. That's pretty damn impressive. And yeah, I kind of, and I kind of feel sorry for the, um, he's considered the savior of pinball. His name's Roger Sharp, but, um, he was basically the, they brought him into court one day to prove that, um, pinball is a game of skill and not a game of chance. But he, he was a guy that saved pinball. Oh my God. So we got Zoltar here. Um, I don't know how far back this machine goes, but, uh, it's an old one, and the one to the left of it, the the, the red-looking thingy, I believe that's a game called Computer Space. If I'm guessing right, that is the very, 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 very first coin-operated arcade game. It was based on a game called Space War. It was just a, it was like a computer game that most uh most techno nerds had in their um had in their had in their labs. But yeah, computer space was uh, based on space war. Like, holy shit. Oh, and also I forgot to mention at the start at the start of this cast, I'm having a can of V8 Energy orange pineapple flavor. Yeah, I think Zoltar I think it was supposed to be one of the first ever fortune telling machines. But yeah, I kind of feel bad for uh, Roger Sharp, though. I mean, he's an old man, but I'm pretty sure uh, a lot of his agedness was uh, less his actual age and more of the fact that he has that. That oh god, the fact that uh, he's had to repeat himself for so many years because uh, nearly every pinball documentary that I've watched has him in it, basically reciting the same thing, you know, basically reciting the same thing every single time just you know the fact you know his um all the things he did in that courtroom where he again he was trying to prove that pinball was a game of skill it was an actual court case they were trying to get the ban on pinball overturned so yeah oh i remember this um yeah it was a it's a plastic molding machine i don't i don't recall ever getting a uh, getting Disney toys out of it, but yeah, there were, uh, I've been in arcades when I was a little kid, like back in the mid to late 80s and carnivals and whatnot. They had these kind of machines in there. And, um, yeah, it says, and it says here towards the bottom, hot, wait a minute. Because, yeah, it was like, they, it was literally molded right in front of you, right there before your very eyes, so you couldn't grab that right away because it was too hot from the molding and all that. But, yeah, I kind of feel bad gotta feel bad for Roger. I bet a lot of the a lot of the reason why he looks so old and haggard is not so much the age, it's just the fact that the, 
the constant stress and dullness of having to repeat himself for so many years. Because this was a... This was a court case. Like, back in the 70s. I think that's... I want to say early to mid-70s. So, you're talking about... Uh, you're talking about... Almost 50 years of saying the same thing over and over and over and over again. In all the seminars and documentaries and whatnot. Man, that's gotta take a toll on you. Surprised he doesn't look like the Emperor or Emperor Palpatine. But yeah, that's. I remember this. Used to play this fairly often. Sadas at Star Spangled Yet Wave. Of course, you could always skip the national anthem too just by pushing the boo button. So. Never seen this one before. But, um, let me. Yes, I forgot to mention something too. Um, I have it hasn't happened in a few days. Um, for those that have seen my other recent casts, um, definitely going to be repeating myself here. Um, a few days ago, one of my casts, one of my cast videos, was um, was copyright claimed. So which means which forced me to delete the video immediately. And this wasn't this wasn't my this wasn't a normal copyright claim. I actually got an email over there saying I have seven days to remove the video. Otherwise, they were going to remove it and give me a copyright strike. So, again, this is just a cast video. No music on it. So, so if if you guys find any of my casts that... If it, if it be something that you want to watch more than once, you'll, you'll definitely want to find a way to download it. Or find a way to record it using video capture software. Um... OBS is the one I use. Um, I know there's others out there. Uh, Streamlabs first comes to mind. But uh, there's a lot of bells and whistles on that one, though. So, not a fan. So. And, um, I'll just... And then, what I'll go ahead and do... Oh, 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 wrong window, wrong window. Okay, so what I'll just go ahead and do is I'll go ahead and let this video run out. And I'll just keep doing running commentary on it since it's what I've already been doing most of this cast anyway. So play this. Play that one. Austin Powers, no thank you. No fan of the franchise. I don't Big Top? I don't recall ever seeing this particular game, but I have seen some of these in my time though. Shooting gallery games. It's just like uh, Nintendo, you know, the Nintendo laser gun. Big Top works exactly the same way. I believe it's just a kind of like a, a laser light. It, it, it's a laser light. You just point and shoot where where the laser or no, there's not even a. You don't even see a red dot or anything. But it's just a it's a light scope. A light scope game probably came out in like the 60s or 70s seen that I don't know how far back it goes but I've, it's been around since the 80s seen that uh, late 80s early 90s late 80s early 90s Outrun 2 only uh, heard the name never actually seen it though <clears throat> Wizard of Oz and I believe this is the one that started it all as far as uh as far as uh, pinball machines with uh, with TV screens Either that or, um, Dialed In. I, I think Dialed In was the first one. Wizard of Oz was the second. But, like I said, from here on out, I have no interest in these kind of machines because I don't like being in two places at once. Again, I, I want to play pinball, not watch TV. It's too distracting. Shack Attack. Ha 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 ha! If it's anything like the Super, like the Super Nintendo uh, 2D fighting game, 
It sucks royal ass. Oh, teed off. Yes, I played that back in the, um, I want to say late 80s, early 90s. Played that one fairly often, actually. You can't find me. Nah, 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 nah. You got your eyes open or what? Oh, and apparently they didn't show it. Let me move forward a little bit. Okay, on the left here, cue ball wizard. Never seen it in real life, but I played it fairly often on pinball arcade, though. Ghostbusters. Um, got it on Pinball Arcade, but um, just taking a look. Yeah, I think um, the one I got a, the one I have on Pinball Arcade is just like this one. At least from what from what I'm seeing here. Transformers, no thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is just like the pinball arcade version. Okay, I always thought they were uh, totally different. Yeah, here's... This is Elvira's latest right here. And again, it's got that TV screen back there, which I, I find it far too distracting. Again, I just want the simple black and orange. Metal typer? But otherwise, what a trip down memory lane. Oh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, see, this is... I mean, it's not unique to this day and age. But it, it's just a, it's just a trend I'm real sick of seeing. Just tables based on current events. Like it's gotta be based on current trending pop culture crap. I think this came out like the, I wanna say the late 2000s, when this, uh, when, when this movie first came out. But like I said, this isn't, it's nothing totally unique, but I think back then, back then, you saw a much greater variety of different types of tables. You know, pinball makers, they all, they actually all went, they went and owned, they went off in their own directions. They just went with whatever felt good at the time and not whatever was popular at the time. But less, I mean, less so these days. And again, it's, it's not just, it's just, it's not just me being a hipster. It's, I don't, I don't follow current events. I'm the kind of person that doesn't, I don't pay attention to headlines until years after they're irrelevant, if anything. You know, so it, it, it's just trending trending tables or tables based on trending pop culture to have no interest to me. So, Monster Bash. Um, FX3 and Arcade has it. The Arcade version is much superior. Cactus Canyon, got that on Arcade? Ripley's Believe It or Not, I have it on Arcade, and I'm no fan of it. Star Trek, if that's the one I'm thinking of, uh, I have it on Arcade. It's not too bad of a table. Um, One thing I like about them is their, is their uh, color coding of the ramps. It actually makes it even easier for me to see them. So they, did, they kind of did a good job with the lighting. Um, I don't really know if they actually stuck to this theme in this day and age, but um, it was just it was just something that occurred to me when I when I played this on Pinball Arcade. It just everything's uh, again everything's color coded, so kind of a cool feature. So we're going back. 
back here again. Party's on! One of my longest standing regulars, Kitaro87. He, I, he loves this table. Um, this isn't, this isn't, this table isn't in my top five. But uh, it's fairly, it's fairly high up there. But again, this is, um, this is one of those tables that, um, uh, me and pretty much anybody else that watches this table, or that watches me stream this table, we all, we all like it. So, glad they have it. Dr. Dude, they have the table turned off, but yeah, that is one of my all-time favorites. It's in my top five. I don't, I can't remember what exact position, but it is, it is in my top five. Um, South Park, I played that fairly often, uh, back in the late 90s. I played that fairly often. It's actually a pretty good table. Genesis, the table that's turned off. That's another awesome table. Um, I've never seen it in real life, but I have seen YouTube videos of it. The soundtrack on it is kick ass, though. And it came out, the table came out in 1986. So it's like, it's freaking 8 bit Nintendo music, and it's still freaking awesome. Indiana Jones. Play that table in the 90s? Not very much, but I did play it. No, I don't do claw games. Hollywood Heat? Never seen that one. But it, this, this is also, um, it, it also goes back to what I said a few minutes ago, too. Um, today's table is following current pop, current pop, or er, current pop culture trends isn't anything unique. This one here is um, an 80s version of a Miami Vice from what I'm seeing on the back glass. It's definitely a Gottlieb table. I can kind of tell by the um, by the digital digital display thingy. But, you know, but like I, like I said, you know, following current trendy pop culture stuff isn't anything unique. This table here is one of them. So, Bad Cats. That's another table I'd love to see on uh, FX3. I actually prefer to see it on Pinball Arcade, but since they no longer do, uh, no longer have a Bally Williams license, it falls to FX3 to come out with that table. Space Shuttle. Uh, played it. Played it on both um, Arcade, or Pinball Arcade, and in real life. I suck at both. Never heard of this one. It's definitely a Gottlieb, though. Oh, 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 whoa, 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 back up, back up, back up. The lit one on the left. Um, game show or something, game time, something like that. Um, that's actually at a bowling alley that I used to go to. Um, I don't, don't remember much about it. I don't, I probably played it only a few times, mainly because, uh, it costs at least 50 cents to play. It's one of the reasons why I, I don't go to that bowling alley anymore. One, the tables are poorly maintained, and two, they're all expensive as hell. So, no thank you. The theater waits. Not this one. This one. Pinball Arcade. Played it quite a bit. Alright. Uh, check these out. Okay. Alright, so... Uh, about a minute left. So, so, I'll just go ahead and call it good here. Um, I pretty much uh, said all the things I wanted to say. And I've pretty much seen all the things I wanted to see on here. So so I'll just go ahead and call it good. Um, so thanks for uh, tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. And um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning. So, But until then...
Thanks again for dropping by, everybody, and see you all next time.